So many of you might be wondering a couple questions right now. One, what is this game that Mikhail has been saying is a masterpiece for the past week? Two, why do I hear rain in the background? And three, why'd you cut your hair? That full hawk was phenomenal. Well, <laughs> a couple reasons. Question one, the game I've been talking about is the mummy, the mastered. This game is, this is a masterpiece that you need to play. You need to play this. Secondly, you're hearing rain because it's storming. There's a flood watch out here in Hawaii, so I can't help it. I need to get this review out and I decided I'm just gonna do it. So if I, is what it is. Thirdly, I asked, I was trying to straighten up my hair, but I messed up, so I just said, screw it, I'll just buzz it off and start over. But with that being said, roll the intro music because you're about to enjoy this. Next generation of great, I'm the next generation of great. I'm the next generation of great, the next generation of great. There's a clock tower level with Medusa head like crows. All right, no set. Go out and buy us right now. <laughs> well, at least that's at least that's what I would like to say without giving much, you know, more context to this masterpiece of a game. But that's why you're here for my review because you want the context, right? Well, with all things being said, this game is a certified masterpiece that was actually heavily influenced by Doctor M64's brilliant AM2R, which is another Metroid 2 remake that was unfortunately taken down by Nintendo prior to Metroid Samus Returns was announced. Now, given that this was very heavily influenced by said game, there are two other games which, well actually three other games, which this game also draws inspiration from. That's Castlevania, or more specifically, the Symphony of the Night style games and Symphony of the Night itself, as well as Contra 4, which is also made by William Ford, and surprisingly, the Soul series, the Demon slash Dark Souls series. Now, I know many of you are wondering how this is even possible. And I'm just gonna say, because it is. This game has a perfect blend of Metroidvania style exploration with the running gun action of Contra. That just simply works. And works so well that this game ranks up there with those amazing games. The plot of the game flows alongside the movie. However, you won't find any Tom Cruise you know, likenesses in the game as he doesn't allow his image or likeness in any medium other than movies for some reason. So that being said, you play as one of the soldiers of the organization Protege that is tasked with looking into and eventually stopping the devastation that Princess Amanet is causing leading up to an eventual fight with the God of Death. You are tasked with exploring the marked areas on your map, which looks point for point similar to Metroid Castlevania, that is complete with all the nooks and crannies the series vets love and also has a set of collectible medallions, 50 in total, that can be collected leading to something special should you collect them all. The different weapons and abilities you gain are very much akin to Metroid and Symphony of the Night in that they are different abilities that grant you either an increased mobility and maneuverability, such as the running speed increase that's point for point similar to Metroid's Hyper Boots upgrade, or increased ammo capacity, health, and even damage resistance. This game takes all the right cues from the franchises that it is inspired by to give you a complete package. Ammo, as well as health, are gained in the same fashion as they are in Metroid. By defeating enemies and gathering the red orbs for health and ammo icons for the respective weapons for more ammo. When you gain a new weapon, relic, or upgrade, the music played harkens back to Metroids, which is a delight to hear. Now let's talk on something I said that may have you curious. I said before that this game is also drawing inspiration from the Soul series by From Software, and now I'm going to say why. When you die, and trust me, you will die a lot. You lose all items, weapons, relics, and abilities that you have gathered. Let that sink in. Now this may seem like a bummer, but 
Here's the clincher. Your dead agent that becomes possessed by Princess Amonette. So when the game reloads from your last save checkpoint, which are thankfully very forgiving and very near when you died, you are given a new agent with nothing other than what you started the game with and are tasked to go out and kill the former agent in order to not only see them off, you know, and give them a rest in peace style send off, but also to gain back everything that you had up to that point. This is the first time that I've ever seen a Metroidvania ever pull off this feat, which to me was truly a marvel of a mechanic and perfectly fits into the narrative plot of this game. Now here's another thing that I find cool. If that dead agent or any of the other enemies kill you, then you have to face not only the current dead agent, but also any other dead agents that appear should you continue to die and they are marked on the map too with their own icon. Now, when it comes to the controls, the game utilizes a majority of the buttons on your controller. I review the Nintendo Switch version, so that means Y is your shoot, X cycles through your three standard weapons, A is your dodge roll mechanic, well at least until much later in the game. B is jump, R uses grenades, and ZL and ZR allow aim locking, which is gives you eight-way shooting capability while stationary. The game gives you a standard rifle akin to the basic rifle found in Contra 4 and the Contra series in general, as well as the basic blaster that you start off any Metroid game with, which has unlimited ammo, but it is relatively weak. Exploring more into the game, however, will net you more and more weapons that can be used for different situations and gameplay styles. However, you can only carry two games in addition to your, two guns rather, in addition to your standard rifle, but these guns can be switched at any outpost that you find along the way, allowing you to change them as you see fit, along with what style of grenades would you like to carry, which there are a couple different variations on the grenades that you can get. Now, let's talk about the music of this game. Man, it's great. No, I'm serious, it's great. Now let me put it in perspective. Is this an OST that will have people praising it in the way we do Metroid, Castlevania, or Nier, which should have won best music category for a game released this year? No, not at all. It's not on that level where it's defining a genre. What it is doing is it's setting a very atmospheric tone for every level that you're in, and also adding to the fact of the realization that you are alone and that anything anything and i really do mean anything can and will kill you the music is a good blend of castlevania especially the clock tower level with its throwbacks to old school castlevania and super metroid and honestly that's all i need to say it sets the tone and it maintains it not only is it not overachieving but it's also not underwhelming it's just right it does what it needs to do for the right given moment, and I'm happy with that. So with all that being said, many may want to know about the boss battles, and are they any good? Yes, they are. They are very creative. However, there is an issue that I ran into on the final boss that I feel broke the game as it made the boss stop attacking while I wailed on him until they died. Something I've reached out to the devs to correct as they are looking into it. The boss battles while will keep you on your feet and they're hard they hit hard all the bosses have two between two to five different levels of attack patterns and you can tell how close you are to beating them by the shade of red that they turn most bosses will turn a shade of reddish purple when they are near death and when they do they will ramp up their attack patterns to try and kill you as quickly as possible and this is something that i like because at no point do you ever feel like you will cakewalk the bosses as they always deliver on challenges. Now we're gonna go into the wrap up. With all the praising that I've done with this game, I must speak on the negatives. Hold up. Actually, I don't really have any to complain about. <laughs> In all honesty, I really enjoyed this game through and through. And aside from the game being a bit on the short side, which I completed in about five and a half to six hours, 
I can't complain about it at all. Sure, it could have had a better system for weapon management, and the map could have been better. And yes, the timing of this release more than likely will be overshadowed by the release of Super Mario Odyssey in the next few days. But I personally feel, and I personally appreciate it for what it is, which is a masterpiece of a game made by a masterpiece of the team at WayForward and a tribute to the classics that paved the way for this genre. Thank you, WayForward, for this game, and I hope you continue making greatness like this. For $20, you get solid gameplay, great soundtrack, decent, if barely there, story, multiple endings, and an awesome collect-a-thon amount of side quests. So all in all, you can't go wrong at all. This game gets the Casanova seal of approval, which means buy this game right now. And that just about wraps up this review of The Mummy Demastered, something that I think everybody needs to play. It's only 20 bucks, you can get it on the eShop, it's definitely worth having. And with that being said, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Deuces Wild, it's your boy Mikhail Casanova, Hawaii's favorite YouTuber, hashtag future legend. Deuce. The spotlight got you demand all the attention. Starry eyed, maybe I need a new prescription. I, I, I see you on top of me, I'm having visions. While you spin it around, I'm getting dizzy, baby. Drop and roll, hot like a